Hello everyone! Today we're going to have another conversation about hair care. A few months ago I published a video on my hair care routine, and like I promised, as a follow-up, this is a more generalized guide to basic hair care for everyone. The information here has been compiled using results from trichology and cosmetic chemistry scientific studies, and will likely help most people. We're going to talk about four basic areas of hair care. Cleansing, conditioning, drying, and styling. In other words, how to clean the hair, protect it, dry it, and then get it into the shape you want. Fulfilling your hair's needs and your preferences in these four areas is the objective of a good hair care regimen. Let's start with cleansing. Many commercial shampoos have harsh surfactants that degrade the cuticle through abrasion and excessive oil extraction and can even sever protein bonds in the hair cortex underneath. These chemicals function primarily as foamers, emulsifiers, and oil extractors. However, they are often used in excess because many people believe in the myth that shampoos with more foam and that leave the hair squeaky clean are better. While these harsh surfactants do clean the hair better, our hair doesn't need to be cleaned that well that often. Overuse of sulfates may result in damaged, brittle, and dry hair as well as oily scalp since your skin responds to excessive dryness by overcompensating with oil production. If this sounds like you and you're using a shampoo often with a main ingredient that contains the word sulfate or sulfonate, here are some alternative recommendations. Buy a sulfate-free shampoo and conditioner duo as a starting point. If you're used to using harsh shampoos, it may take time to adjust to the gentler formula, so be patient. Try not to wash your hair every day. This strips the natural oils from your scalp that help protect your hair from damage. It also increases your oil production, leading to that greasy, gross look. Washing every other day is a good standard, but if you can even shoot for less, that would be better. Like I've said before, I wash my hair every four days. On off days, you can keep your hair dry, wet it and massage your scalp in the shower to dislodge some dirt and skin, or wash with just conditioner. If this still feels too harsh for you, check out co-washing. This is a method of cleansing the hair only with conditioner. It's especially helpful for people with very fragile and frizzy hair or sensitive scalps. If you're co-washing or using any styling products, use a clarifying shampoo every few weeks. This is the time where I say sulfates are good. During clarifying, you want to remove any sort of buildup that has occurred and sulfates will do that really well. The infrequent use of sulfates will be negligible amounts of damage to your hair. Now we move on to conditioning. Conditioners protect the hair by smoothing down the cuticle. This reduces the chance for damage and makes the hair shaft softer, more combable, and more manageable. It also reduces moisture loss. Conditioners can be applied in the shower, after washing while hair is wet or dry, and in a concentrated amount as a deep conditioner before washing. You may find benefit by using one kind or all three depending on your hair susceptibility to damage and porosity. In-shower conditioners are the most common and are often formulated as part of a pair with a shampoo. If you co-wash, this conditioner will also serve as your cleansing step. Leave-in conditioners or conditioners you add after washing are very helpful if you plan on doing any sort of styling. Look for something light if you have thin hair that is weighed down easily like a thin liquid or spray that doesn't have heavy silicones. Thicker hair may require heavier conditioners like creams or more viscous fluids. Finally, deep conditioners typically have the strongest effect, hence their name. If your hair still feels dry or rough, try a commercial or natural deep conditioner formula once every one to two weeks. Depending on the amount of condition you're looking for and what ingredients you use, you can put it on for a few minutes in the shower apply it all over your head a couple of hours before a wash, or apply it at night, sleep on it using a shower cap or old towel, and wash it out in the morning. Warming the deep conditioner before application increases the penetrative abilities. This is also a good chance to take care of your scalp with antibacterial ingredients, thereby helping dandruff and growth speed at the same time. Now we get to drying. One of the most common sources of hair damage is heat styling such as hot irons, straighteners, and blow dryers. Avoid these as much as possible to avoid the damage they cause. While heat styling may seem like the only way to make your hair look good right now, 
Over time, as the condition improves, you will most likely look better without the need for heat. However, there's some preliminary research that indicates complete air drying also damages the cell membrane complex between hair fibers. So here's some drying suggestions to minimize damage as much as possible from both sources. Towel or cloth drying. Soak up excess water first by wrapping your hair in a towel for a few minutes. Or better yet, use a fabric with a finer weave, like a cotton t-shirt or satin. The rough fabric loops on towels can cause friction damage. Air dry. This is the best for smoothness and shine, but consider using a protein treatment and or a penetrative deep conditioner from time to time to conserve the integrity of your cell membrane complex and avoid fragility and breakage. Blow drying. Or blow dry your hair on a low heat or cool setting after applying a heat protectant with non-volatile silicones, PVP slash DMAPA acrylates copolymer, quaternium 70, and or hydrolyzed wheat protein as top ingredients. And finally, there's styling. A styling regimen is a very personal preference that people tailor to their own unique hair over time, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. But here are some good rules of thumb. Avoid tight braiding, brushing, ponytailing, and bunning while your hair is wet. It's weaker in this state and will break more easily. Avoid products with short chain alcohols such as SD alcohol, alcohol dena, which is short for alcohol denatured, propanol, propyl alcohol, and isopropyl alcohol. They're included in products to decrease drying time and make the product spread more easily, but they also dry out the hair by evaporating the moisture needed in the hair shaft. Good alcohols, on the other hand, include laurel alcohol, cetyl alcohol, myristyl alcohol, sterile alcohol, cedarol alcohol, and behenyl alcohol. These are long chain molecules that act as conditioners. Just be careful not to use too much, as they can easily weigh hair down and may contribute to blemishes in acne prone people who get it on their skin. Silicones are also useful conditioners that can be more difficult to wash out and therefore can build up over time with undesirable consequences. Use a clarifying shampoo from time to time or avoid these ingredients. And don't forget those heat protectants we already talked about. And that's the end of this video on hair care. I hope these tips help you out in some way. They aren't definitive rules, so if you like what you're doing right now, keep on doing that. This is also only a basic guide, so you may have more specific problems that this video won't solve. I'll post more detailed videos in the future on issues like this. Also, remember that change in hair quality is a slow process, so be patient for a couple of weeks if you don't see immediate improvement. Good luck with your routine, and I'll see you again next time.